the forge has gone quiet, the bellows blow no more. The forge has gone quiet, the smiths have gone home. Only fading embers remain, and my hearth grows cold. One kiss from you to rekindle it all. Welcome back to Queen of Embers, episodes 35 and 36. I'm your Game Master, Daniel Fox. I'm the playtesters, the cult, the gang, the people who made Zweihander and main Gash Raid. You know, I don't really know why I say that every time. Every time, it's, it's, yeah. It's, 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 in podcasts, when you say the same thing every time, I, I, like, whenever I hear that on podcasts, I love it. It's just like, it's a cool tradition, like a sign-off or yeah. a sign-on. Dude, we've got trailers, bro. We got like a front end trailer. Mm-hmm. We've got a we've got a we don't have any we have a we have an end trailer. Oh, we have a bumper. Good. We don't we need a bumper if we ever do like a full like a we need a bumper if we ever do like two episodes together, but we split them up still. Like tonight, for those who are listening, as you probably already well know, <laughs> we split up episodes thirty five and thirty six uh, between weeks. Um, so you get, you know, hour and a half to two hours of content every single week. Uh, both in video format and in podcast format. So if you were, if you like, I don't know, if you want to listen on Google Play or iTunes, which is going away, RIP. Um, regardless, you can listen to a podcast while you're on the go. You can watch the video or just turn the video on in the background while you're working. So I'm trying to give you guys uh, as much um, whatever medium you want. We're going to meet you where you're at. Meet your audience where they're at. That's the right. marketing 101. So... Um, no announcements, uh, I think. Well, well I guess we're we'll have that. There's a book signing this weekend. Everybody who's listening probably doesn't live in the Kansas City or Missouri or Kansas area, so you won't be there. But we're giving out some limited, some limited edition print run bookmarks. Those look sweet. Yeah. We're going to bring them to uh, Origins. All right. Yeah. Nice. Bring them to Origins and Gen Con. Uh, we actually just pinned a deal today with Studio 2 to distribute Zweihander. So even though we won't have a booth at Origins or Gen Con because... Get the book booths here uh, months in advance, apparently, as we found out. Yeah. Um, we're going to have books there, and I'm going to go to the booth and stuff a bunch of bookmarks in there. Uh, and there's, there's, I think there's four different types of bookmarks. One is for, well, I don't want to talk. I'll only tell you the first one we we're doing. This is the one for this weekend. It's the Cell Sword one. Basically, in the front, it's like an image, and on the back, it has hacks. Like, so I under RPG hacks for playing a Cell Sword. So quick, quick things you can reference. I'll do some others for other professions too. Is one of those you can take on four people, but five would be pushing it. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, not. But oh. <laughs> trying to make them game mechanics specific, but damn, oh, actual awesome. game is yeah. Okay. okay, yeah. Not, not like you can, you never stuff like serious or modern serious entries as a cell sword. Yeah, it's your trait and talent stuff. <laughs> but um, yeah, we'll bring them to Gen Con. We'll bring the origins, and we'll definitely have them at Pax Unplugged. Ooh. Which is our big splash. We're gonna have a um, booth there. We'll have our player's handbook, which comes out in December. Uh, maybe some other stuff too. Oh, uh, we'll, we'll talk about more about that later on. But um, so I guess I did have announcements. No, well, book what? Yeah. Oh yeah, somebody wanted a book. Yeah. Uh, Tanner Shake. I'm pretty sure that's the correct way. I'm assuming it's German. Tanner Shake won uh, our revised core rule book. I'll be dropping that in the mail for him tomorrow. Congratulations. Yeah, dude. Congrats. Congrats. It's, uh, he is one of 12 people to receive a book in advance. Nice. Including present company. So there's 12 people out there who actually have advanced copies, including, well, Escapist Magazine and Polygon and a bunch of other people too, but let me tell you, it's worth it. (laughs) It's a nice book. (laughs) I really like the new layout and everything. It's great. Mm -hmm. It's fancy. So, um... Let's play some games. All right. All right. What are we yeah. playing? Uh, I think we're going to play D&D tonight. No, just kidding. Okay. We're playing Warhammer. Not even kidding. We're, we're playing Zweihander. Okay. So for the first. Uh, <laughs> corn for the corn? God. <laughs> popcorn for the popcorn Don't lord? Do we have a Harper-related announcement? Oh, his, what? Like, uh, oh, what's my thing? Drawback. drawback. Yeah, we do. No. So, before we dive in, for those who were listening to previous episodes, Harper Clavager... Is suffering from just a, minor, a new drawback. Just a minor 
something. Yeah. Like so I'm going to have you read this all out loud. It's called Lost Heart. All right. <laughs> I don't even got to write it down. All right. Lost Heart, uh, the flavor text is, you are given to bouts of despair and hopelessness hmm. when the Baroness isn't within reach. Without her smile, her long glances or touch, you feel alone. Oof. You feel hopeless, and you'll do anything to ensure that you're reunited with her. Hmm. You'll go to the ends of the earth to seek her out. Effect. When suffering from stress, fear, or terror, those afflicted with this disorder must reduce all damage they do by their fellowship bonus for either one, two, or three hours, depending on the severity of their madness. Mm. At oh, any time, wow. those afflicted with lost heart may flip the result to succeed at skill tests to dodge or parry. Interesting. Each time they take the advantage of this benefit, they gain three corruption. Totally worth it. <laughs> I love this sort of stuff. Yes. <laughs> so that that's gonna be fun. Yeah. Dodge things but can't hit anything. Wow. Well, I can't damage. He's just them. trying to live. You're just trying to survive. So you trying can to see survive, your sweetie. That's yeah. right. <laughs> I gotta make it back to her. I gotta make it back. You're sweet too. How's she gonna survive without me? <laughs> I think Harper would do anything for love. They keep do. And even that. Even that, yeah. Even that. that. Even that, yes. He would definitely do that. Eat some meat. That's right. So let's dive right into what happened last game session. Who wants to give us the update? Well, there was an accident. Was there? Yeah. <laughs> a bit of a spill. <laughs> uh, try, try as we might in order to uh, get word back to Steed's Hill and get a little bit of direction on where the, how they want us to proceed. We just couldn't do it. It seemed like... Poor Matthew just... His night. Yep. It was everything. raining and it dark. Like the DM was against us. I mean, the world... <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> I critically wait, 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 will wait, wait, wait. fail. No, no, no. It was the gods. It was the dice yeah. gods, all right? It was the dice oh, gods. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. That's, that's what I meant. Okay. Broken horse legs or the broken horse lord. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, Harper, who didn't want to go. Did not. Um, because he knew it was a bad idea. That was terrible. Uh, but went anyway, because uh -huh. he's he's a good soldier who follows orders. Uh-huh. Um, when it went, uh, we were out in the. They were out in the wilderness when. Uh, um, There's not Warren, the city. But... Yeah, when right. Warren came out to help. Mm -hmm. Couldn't get it done. Couldn't take his time because it would have been very bad. Yeah. Though if he uh, had. I told you. If he had, no, he would have been out here all night long. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then, uh, so, so maybe that you should explain to the listeners this is a perpetual thing. Yeah, perpetual yeah. thing. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, you should so take his time every time, but never there, does. There was, this is by 10%. There was, yeah, there was also a time every when time. He, he himself was getting uh, tree panning done. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, on the inside of your head. Yep. Uh, <laughs> in, order, in order to get rid of chaotic rot. Yep. Uh, and every time my character, actually, another clavager. Yeah, another clavager. Um, Orwell clavager. Baked. Uh, for you to take that. <laughs> yeah, it said, please let me take my time when doing this, because I'm kind of new to it, you know. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, you said no. The villain was like, no. You said no every time, and I missed it by te by under 10% every yeah. time. Three times so, in a row. We're in a hurry now. we got we got to get this done. <laughs> so. so there goes 27% of yeah. uh, willpower down the drain. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. 20... To the matter at hand. <laughs> yeah, sorry. 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 Uh, <laughs> right. Thank you. Uh, one tangent down. Um we went ahead and we got the horse back to town, uh, and we decided to just uh, see if we can get a note to Steve's Hill, um, and we uh, paid a pretty penny for that. Oh, you by, did? By we. Yeah, oh, yeah. By we, you I mean... Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. By we, you mean me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I ended up talking to a lot of people into lending me uh, some money to... Shit some mail, and turns out that I didn't need it because of uh, good bargain skills and being small. Um, we were able to buy a few more necessities, food, um, everything like that for Medical the journey. Supplies, such. Um, met up with the folks uh, who were taking the bear. 
barrister? Yeah. Yeah, the barrister uh, to the destination, and I think we were all going together, and then we were going to split up past Hastings um, as the decoy is going to continue to go on. My, what a decoy it was. Uh, the uh, Zeppelin itself was put on wheels and uh, being pulled by a massive team of 20, 20 team of oxen. Yeah. There was like 18 or something yeah. like that. Or two dozen oxen. Two score. Two score. That's 40 That's 40. Oxen. <laughs> yeah. A lot of That's oxen. quite a job. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. It's half four score. Yeah. Uh, we, we got to meet some of the individuals that uh, were going along. Uh, the barrister was... Uh, Who were some, some of the people who were going along? Old school. Karen Bigley, Sammy, and then, uh, of course, the barrister. DJ Biggity Big Pants. <laughs> and then, who's the guy we were meeting with? The actual general. Wolfgang? Yeah, Wolfgang. The captain? Captain. Captain. Quote, unquote. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, we found a, a bone picker that uh, seemed to happen upon us rather quickly because of the fog. And uh, uh, <laughs> That's a little blame. They had said that there was uh, he picked a, a stuff from a battle that happened a long time ago but with all the rains and floods that it washed some stuff up. Uh, and I can't really remember anything else. What else happened? Because I know more happened, I just can't. Nothing particular. I mean, lots of failures. So the barrister told us her backstory. Oh, yes, yes, she actually recognized Terwin's last name and uh, mm -hmm. said she was uh, um, excited to meet him. <laughs> he was like, what? Um, and she asked him about his dad, who he didn't really want to talk too much about. I'm super safe. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah. So I believe also that Alistair and the Captain Wolfgang spoke too about a shared past. Yep. This is a this is a world that has been uh, building and sort of folding on itself for a long time. So. We found a place where a few of those folds met. Needless to say, um, characters and families that go back, uh, well, five years in real time or more, and a hundred years in game time. So you find yourselves just about a day outside of Hastings. The Madeline, Madeline, as uh, Wolfgang has come to call it. It's trundling along. There's a vicious wind, a cutting wind, in fact, that seems to fight against you and the oxen. The great behemoth of a zeppelin seems to teeter precariously uh, upon the wagons that's been affixed to with a series of uh, bits of lumber and framework. Sammy, uh, <clears throat> the gentleman who is trapped, Sammy Newhouse, the Grahlstetter, who's traveling with Wolfgang, as well as Hrung, is the one who reputedly put this together, put the framework together, and they are said to be delivering this to uh, an important ally to the Baroness and Kael Tyrion, which Kael Tyrion is, well, it's a ways away. Um, from where you're at, if you were to be able to see this guy, you would judge Beyond the uh, <coughs> rain that's falling in the, in the fog of a uh, late autumn, that you'd likely be able to see the Steadwall Mountains by now. You know that Hastings is within a stone's throw. Is it within the foothills of the Stead of the Steadwall? The great mountain range that runs alongside the Axwater, separating the Rovane Girdle from the Kingdom of Aglador. Hastings is still not in sight, but um, you've been moving at a very slow and steady pace. I believe, actually, that you all had encountered uh, 
some difficulty or the, within the rain, and you suffered some peril, if I'm not mistaken, due to it. The uh, Rosalia, uh, the barrister, is staying inside the Madeline and looking back over our wilderness travel, um, our roles, it was uh, Warren and Harung who are driving the oxen. You're walking alongside them. You're wearing your, you're, you're covered in mud and muck. You're cracking the whip. You're leading the oxen where they become stubborn, trying to draw them through this muddy path. This seems almost absurd to bring such a grandiose gift halfway across the martyr's green earth, seemingly, particularly through a mountain range, to deliver to to whoever, whomever, its intended. Uh, it's in, his intended gift receiver is. You're still uncertain. No, we were told. Who is it? Randall. Randall. No, no, Randall Stephen Arcade. Arcade. No, no, no. One of the mountain It's the Baron of Kelterian. Stanton Arcade. Stanton Arcade, Baron. Baron Stanton Arcade. That's right. A name that, uh, <clears throat> that carries some weight. But uh, as for the guide, I believe, Alistair, you uh, had hired a local Durindler to help take you all west. Take you as far as Hastings, at least. Mm -hmm. He has he is done as such. And finally, uh, Banneker uh, has been um, situated atop the Madeline top deck near the great banded iron puckle gun with its numerous cannons bound together in brass. Uh, that uh, seems rather dangerous. <laughs> the, uh, the, the, this Zeppelin, or perhaps best just to simply call it by her name, the Madeline, uh, named after the Baroness, the first, her first name, um, is groaning and creaking beneath your feet, Vandegar. You can feel its great weight, almost like some living thing, as if it was... As if it was breathing beneath of you, so as 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 it kind of rocks slowly back and forth. Fortunately, it's been good for your for your being able to rest at night. Um, it's been very helpful. In fact, you rested as well in quite some time. But the grunting and creaking still makes you feel a little bit ill at ease. You should perhaps a bit of a stomach ache as you get a bit of seasickness up, up here. <laughs> uh, the great the great blue sky and the stretch of the girdle reaches out before you in the morning. And by midday, it is covered in a deep field of blue, dark, dark blue clouds and rain. As you uh, are beneath uh, one of the, the, the four castles, the whole thing looks like some great fortified castle affixed to the top of a, of a galleon. It's the most absurd-looking thing you've ever seen, but it certainly matches that which you had seen in the. Um, the La Vinci chapter house. Like, this looks precisely like the Zeppelin that was described in the schematics that you had found that were written upon the chalkboards that that uh, Felix Hofstorff, before he uh, ended his life, before being brought to justice, it seems to match the small models that were panting and puffing and clicking and whirring around that kind of living model across the table that he destroyed in his fit of madness and insanity as he spoke of Abel. Who Abel is, you have not discovered yet, nor has your mind's turned toward it. Instead, it has turned toward leaving Dorindal. You have certainly stirred up some trouble. Uh, you know that the Saltpeter men have it out for you, out for blood. And um, it's fortunate that these things have come together in the way that they have, being able to leave the city. And you know that it will be at least a month until you return to Dorindal, which means... You won't be back until winter. Yeah, Whether it's snowing by then or not is hard to say. The bright side, we're going to have to bring this thing back. Mm -hmm. No, we'll be coming to the mountains. The later that night, snow has. <laughs> the oxen come to a slow crawl and a stop. As the storm has seemingly passed, and what seemed like nighttime becomes day, the clouds lift, 
The darkness is gone. It is banished by Algol, the sun. As the clouds part and begin to illuminate this lowland dell with high green grasses, a place simply called Hastings. You'd imagine, as you look out there, the fields have already been reaped. But you'd imagine early autumn uh, that there'd be bale bales of hay everywhere. As you're moving along, the tree is mostly bereft of leaves and fruit. There are a great number of, um, of uh, apiers, apiers who would keep bees and such. Are attending to some duties. One of them has like an inflated pig's bladder. He's kind of he's pushing some sort of smoky powder through it as he's filling the box and removing the honeycomb and honeysuckle. He is um, at first alarmed by, and you can see this from your vantage point, Banneker. You can see he turns toward the horizon where two score oxen are rumbling across the horizon. <coughs> bearing the Madeline. None of them are lashed to it. I was they have oxen kind of lashed kind of in the in the in the train as well to switch out. But nonetheless, when he turns to warm this great landship, he is wide-eyed guffawing. <laughs> and as you're kind of coming toward Hastings, you realize the 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 twisting dirt road is not wide enough to support the Madeline, who come to a stop. And already people are beginning to gather all around this thing. Locals are starting to kind of collect together. In awe of this thing. You come down off the moorings of the rope along with Barrister Rosalia, uh, Banneker, uh, as well as Hrung, that massively tall woman who has pledged herself to uh, keep the Barrister safe. You disembark and you join the others. You all gather, collecting together outside of Hastings. <clears throat> oh, I made it. <laughs> yep. Don't rub up, dude. That's good. Where is the barrister right now in comparison to us? Oh, uh, she's standing nearby. They're all kind of collected together. So, so we can't get through? I don't know. I think we're, I think we're stopping for the night. Wolfgang kind of looks down the road. I don't think we're going to get through this way. We'll have to go through the fields. I'm sure, a farmer's going to be right happy about that, but there ain't another way. Another way we got to go. We got to go. Any of you been through Hastings before? Can't say as I have. Yeah. Uh, I might have. Um, would I? Can I roll? You would not. You would not have now. No. Okay. No. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know which way I came east. Probably not through Hastings. Probably but through Chander, the south. I haven't been much further west than this, but I've been here. No. I mean, it's in the mountains. Why would you come to it? We need to find the burgomaster of this village. I'm surprised, I wouldn't be surprised with a crowd like this <clears throat> if the burger master comes to us. Hey, boy. <laughs> Don't turn to anyone that's... A child wanders by. Oh, gee! He's got his fingers <laughs> in his cheeks. He's rosy cheeks. Well, that's the burger master. There's a... Uh, be a brass penny in his boy. Burger master Ronan is in the refectory, he says. Go run and get him, and there'll be two pennies in for him. He's in the refectory, sir. It's a holy day. All right. So where where is your uh, reflectory at? He points toward Hastings. There's a church not far from here. It's small. You can't miss it. It's not as big as this. Oh golly! How did you get this thing here? Well, I had a hell of a time doing it. I'll tell you that. These dang things. Crack wood, the oxen. <laughs> I heard stories about these. Damn I don't. What do you want to do, boss? Well, here. here. I'll flick him a penny. Oh boy! He takes the penny. Get out of here, though. I suppose we need to go and see the burgomaster. 
Well, he'd be he'd have the right idea about how to get this through or around. Okay. Well, I think it's also so we can stay in the night here from maybe what he was saying. The tall woman, Hrung, as she has been called. I'll pledge myself to the barrister and keep her safe here. We shan't, we shan't leave the Madeline. I look around and see how many people are gathered. Probably about 10 to 15. They're slowly filtering forward. Well, Some are a little bit cautious to even approach. A few of the local farmers have their, their not pitchforks, but their rakes in hand. and They're kind of looking at it like it's something out of some storybook. <laughs> you know, as capable as I think you might be, no one can take on 15. I can stay. Same. I don't need you to speak some burger. We're not going anywhere anytime soon, Wolfgang says. If we were storm like we did yesterday, I don't think we're going to make it to the mountains. We need to figure a few things out, logistically. Now, wasn't there also... Logistically, what did we come away that we couldn't fit through? Uh, Rains come down over the mountains, they wash out roads. It's a problem for us to figure out. It's why we are hired, why you have paid a princely sum, he reminds you. I wouldn't pay a princely sum, but as you say. All right, well, we probably should get moving then. But we rise for free. We all do our work. <clears throat> Grung, stay here with the barrister, Wolfgang orders. Sammy. I want you to ensure that this framework is not going to fall to pieces once we cross over the foothills. <laughs> Samuel looks toward it. Well, I think we may need some supplies. Hammers, nails, big ones too. Nine inch nails. No. Pythons. Pythons like we're trying to climb the mountain. Big ones to drive through the wood. Mallets. We've lost a bit here and there. He's, had, he's taking a long walk around it. Uh, this wagon spoke broke. Yeah, we're gonna need to be here for a bit, boss. He says to um, to some old gang. I suppose you could write down all the particulars. We could head into town and get them for you. So anyways, that's gonna take me a bit of time to figure out what we need to do. Give me a few hours, two or three. Well, I'm gonna take account of the Madeline first up top deck. Take your time. Better be safe than sorry. Is there timber around here? Yeah. Oh yeah. It's a, it's not a thickly forested place by any means, but there's copses of trees here and there. Why don't you rest that bug up? We can't take some of these trees. Wolfgang nods. He pulls at his gray beard. We can always expand the road that way. Aye, he says. I don't think it'd be a. I suggest we would probably need to uh, reinvigorate our supplies for food, foodstuffs for the animals, prepare for a long mountain hike. You, Alistair, he says. Silently turned. You've been through the stead wall before, yes? All right. Let's take a look at these maps. Let's find, uh, let's talk about routes. I'll walk over to him. The rest of you, find the Burgermaster. Let's, uh, introduce ourselves, he says. Maybe your guide can help you. We don't have one of them anymore. He's uh, he's no longer an employee. Oh, this is, oh, is, where it, we, is this Hastings? It is, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I this is where we part <laughs> ways, unfortunately. I'm I afraid I don't think I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm not going to go through the lands of the mountain folk and <laughs> get fucking killed, he says. <laughs> Big thick bro. Yeah? With money, it'll be somebody who's willing to go. Find someone here who knows the path better. Right. And I think if we go in and find the Burgermeister, we'll be able to start talking and planning all these things. Well, well, that's feet feet, as they like to say down south. So, uh. <clears throat> okay, nods, as if he's the one giving the orders. So, what do you want to Start walking down through town. <laughs> well, the boss, who's staying his job? Make two decisions. You two said you stay. Done. All right, then I'll stay. I'll start climbing back up. I'm hanging out next to Miss Barrister. Barrister. Uh, wait, wait, wait. 
You're climbing up there and you're, you're taking it with you. Well, of course, boss. All right. All right. And then we're going to pull the ropes up so we can defend it. Because then four can kill 15. Yes. I reckon I can stick, stick around to you and make us a proper meal tonight. We do need to drop anchor. I'm afraid she's leaning a little bit too far to the left of my taste. Look at this. Take a second. Come on, step back with me, boys. So, Milady, he says as well. <laughs> See how she's kind of catered to the left? Off kilter. Off kilter. If you look down toward the horizon, it's almost perfectly straight. This is Sammy Newhouse saying this. We need to throw that anchor off the right hand side, or she's going to collapse. Counterweight. Get on up there. Let's do it. Come on. And he spits in his hands and he's climbing the rope. The knotted rope. I think it just needs a bit more lumbar support. Ah, <laughs> well, so you're staying here. I'm looking at maps, are you coming with us to, to maybe see if we can find someone that won in the Hastings? Well, I was asked for help here, but I figure there's nothing else for staying the night. We ain't going anywhere right now. Not going anywhere anytime soon. Wolfgang says. So do you want to come with or do you want to stay? I'll meet you at the, uh, I'll meet you at uh, lodging or drink house later. Well, I'm certain there's only one. Surely you're not going to make me go alone, are you? Oh, boy. What help am I going to be on hammering on a post? <laughs> but I suppose it's mine. <laughs> Super nice. <laughs> but going to hammer on the All right. Also, I might be better yeah, to right. speak to a burger. Stay here. Nah. <laughs> Uh, it's good to have you along. So, yes, the two of us will go find the burger white street. All right. And look for a messenger that might possibly pop up somewhere. Yeah! Messenger waiting with a question mark on his head. <laughs> <laughs> so that seems convenient. <laughs> My goodness! So you come into... Uh, you come into this um, settlement... And it seems to be a rather busy kind of trading post of sort. There's a lot of people around here. You were, you, when you were passing through, you saw a lot of surrounding smaller villages. So Tastings is not just a village. It's kind of a, a township of a sort. Okay. You'd imagine there's probably about three to 5,000 people here. There's stone buildings. There's a creek, that run, a river that runs through it. Um, but it's all kind of nestled beneath the crowns of these uh, tall, smoky, gray mountains that are called the Stead Wall. A, uh, an old uh, ancient Aridane word uh, meaning meaning wall. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It's, it's called Obvious Mountain. And it took <laughs> us three days to get here? It's mount, mount, yeah. Nice. You'd imagine it'd be much faster if you were a horse without this giant juggernaut in tow. The place appears to be rather it. busy from midday. Uh, now that the rain has let up, some of the merchants and travelers are kind of coming out from beneath the eaves of roofs and outside the local watering hole and coaching station and beginning to gather their things, take account of their horses, ensure that they're, that all of their um, goods and sundries they're taking are affixed to the wagons before they leave for the day. You can imagine some of these, some of these people probably came in from the last night. Maybe some of them this morning. Some are actually probably returning home or maybe even coming back. But there's uh, quite a bit of foot traffic. Um, as the boy kind of identified, you do see a chapel not far from here. Um, you're surprised not to see people in the fields, but if it is a holy day, it would not be, I guess it would be too surprising. It would be a Sunday. Um, you see kind of along the, uh, the middle of Hastings throughout the town, there are advertisements for local mead. Not surprising, because this is a village of apiers. Um, a lot of beekeeping, a lot of mead, et cetera, et cetera. But um, you find it in an old abbey not far from, from where you're at. You begin your approach. It's quiet. And, uh, I mean, it's midday, right? It is, yeah. I'll open the door then. As you're approaching the abbey, 
there are quite a few bees buzzing around. All around here. That's ominous. Yeah, Jeez. ominous bees. Jeez. Oh no, I'm allergic. Hmm. Allergies! Suddenly they form into a swarm. That's right. Damn. AOE attacks, they're swarms. That's right. Swarms are the worst thing to fight ever in any form. You thing. come inside this building um, and it's quiet in the sense there's a solemnness to it uh, it seems to kind of be shielded from the outside as you come inside there's kind of the religious kind of iconography all around tall stained glass windows a few people meander about between the pews um, and you would guess a, a local monk or two are kind of talking with others there's a place to make offerings. There's a place to pray. Unfortunately, none of you catch a fire just step inside the threshold. <laughs> it was close. Who went there? Who went to the Abbey? Potter. Okay. So Elisa and, and Terwin. Mm-hmm. You get a weird feeling as you kind of walk inside. Like something doesn't quite settle right. You don't know what it is yet, but something doesn't quite settle right as you come from inside. feeling about this. You turn around from the threshold of the temple and you can see at the church, and you can see from here that great string of oxen and the people guffawing at the battle line. It's, I mean, this it, it easily dwarfs it does I wouldn't say it dwarfs the height of the abbey but it's, I'm sorry, it doesn't dwarf the girth of the abbey but it certainly is high up on the stilts and the wagons. A man begins a slow approach Noon. Travelers, eh? That's right. Yeah. You come to pray. It wasn't my intention that I could do that. Ah, yes. Well, welcome to Hastings. Thanks for the welcome. Uh, Name's Tatwin. I see. I am Brother Jameis. Uh, Brother Jameis? Perhaps you would uh, join me in prayer to the learner. Eloran will illuminate your hearts with knowledge of what, what is to come. Uh, uh, Terran looks a little bit taken aback whenever he says Eloran out loud. Of course. Does light guide you? He will lead you in prayer and you will yeah. light a votive and you will place it inside a little Catholic box, or whatever it's called. You know, and, <laughs> and you'll pay for the honor. That's right. Yep. Terran will do all the things. Yeah. Will you tithe? Yeah. Would I know what a standard tithe would be? Uh, one ninth of every coin belongs to the Nine Father. You don't have to tithe that. That's what the priest would do. That's what, yeah. They would say one, one, ninth, one, one ninth of every coin, one, one of nine coins belong to the Nine Father. I got one. I'll hand him a silver. Okay. The nation is greatly appreciated. Okay, so that's probably more than. May Lord light the way. You as well. Terwin discreetly puts in a gold crown. You put it into the little offering box. No one will see what you put in there. Yeah. You just simply drop it in a wooden box that's locked on top of the uh, the altar. Your clunk. Your <laughs> clink. Yeah, you hear clink from mine and then clunk. Just looks at him. <laughs> it's clear that Brother Jameis knows the clink of jink and the clunk of of cash money as he will turn toward you. <laughs> how, may I, how may I assist? Well, we's looking for the Burgermeister. We heard he was here. Yes. Proctor Roland, he says. Oh. Is it Proctor Roland's Burgermeister? Aye, it is. Proctor Roland is attending to religious duties today. Is he going to be like indisposed. Yeah, indisposed. <laughs> if you were to speak to the proctor, perhaps I'd ask that you would return tomorrow. Once the day is anew. Uh, so like you know, it's customary to come and be like introducing ourselves when we're with a, a large company of people. Yes. And, um, I was told that a great dragon born upon the back of wolves was brought here. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, now we are. Al alas, no wolves. No. A train of oxen and a miraculous thing from Durindal, without a doubt. The unfortunate being the dragon also seems to be missing. Yeah. The sun, the moon, and the stars of Durindal has graced us with a great gift. Indeed. It is, uh, it is an honor to behold it. Is it bound for beyond the mountains, he inquires. Well, I'm not exactly sure. I never know the destination. Yeah, I'll just go where they tell. As I, as I look down at uh, myself, it's like... Okay, crossing your fingers behind your back. Lie, lie, lie. You both get one corruption. <laughs> lie into a priest. In a temple. In a church. Whatever. Sorry, just put another jink in there. It'll solve your sins. I was going to say, do I get minus one for giving him money? <laughs> no. <laughs> you do not offset your How much you clear from lying by paying. <laughs> well, that was the Catholic way for a lot of years. Yeah, <laughs> pay for clean cut. Right. So if, right. if you don't gain a corruption by from this, then then that that is what illustrates the fact that you were able to rationalize. I gave the church. The proctor roll will be indisposed, but if you could return tomorrow morning's light, I am certain the I'm certain Elorum will illuminate the way. Should we meet him here? I. So, he nods and smiles. I apologize for taking more of your time on obviously an important day. Uh, where might we find no shelter for the night? Yes. Not far from here. He takes you to the threshold of the church. Mm -hmm. Go to the Raven's Loft. The Raven's Loft. Mm. Yes. Seek you shelter there. <laughs> but quickly, before the sun sets, you know, I want to light the way, he says, smiling, ushering you out. Hey, you know, the sun's up there. Is there something we should know about? Night. About the witching hour? The sun sets to the west beyond the stead wall. Night comes quickly in the shadows of the stead of the mountains. Sure. Oh. Is there a curfew? No, he says. Is this a uh, particularly inhospitable place when there's no... Of course, they are perfectly pleasant. Oh. Okay. Simply for when the sun would reach sight. its... When the when Alga would reach its apex in the time of this season, which settled by the sixth hour after, due to the mountains, it will settle at the fifth hour. Oh. Yeah. All right. Well... I mean, it's okay if we're out after the sun sets, right? What a horrible night to have a curse. <laughs> <laughs> Castlevania 2. Yeah. You're going to find zombies in the streets yep. and get knocked into water. Well, so long as there's nothing threatening to us, uh, it's simply that we have quite a bit of work and right. I, I hope to finish before the sun goes down. Of course. He seems a bit off by, by the suggestion. Okay. Find you to the Raven's Loft. And your companion, your boon companions as well. Fine. Comfortable beds, warm food, good company. Oh, oh. Great bread. Hey, low and light your way, he says as he ushers, ushers you away. I visibly, like, <laughs> recoil at that. Like, well, I'm almost afraid. And, uh, uh, thanks! Meanwhile, Back at the ranch, back at the uh, the Madeline. Watch out below! You hear Sammy yell as he and Banneker drop the heavy anchor. It goes thud, hits the ground and dirt. It's a great That's massive chain of anchors. Anchor. Literally drops from above, driving a spike directly into the ground. Not like an actual anchor of a ship, but like a, literally a what looks like a, a large spike just thunk drops to the ground attached to a chain. You would imagine, kind of in your mind's eye, if this thing was to take toward the heavens, it would keep it from ascending. Oh. So like a lawn dart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> attached to it. <laughs> That's right. And, and to give you a description of how thick this thing is, probably about the thickness of this pillar, so about like three foot by three foot in a perfect diamond, in a perfect uh, triangular shape. Like a three-sided like a pyramid. Just boom, about nine feet long. It buries itself about five feet into the earth. 
found in the rage. Hey, what the? I'll take a, uh, <laughs> splat! Mud goes everywhere. It gets up <laughs> across the side of the night line of the hall. Do we, uh, do we need to hammer it down with, like, a, a two-handed ball or anything like that? Is that part it, of the no, anchoring? It looks like it's affixed pretty firmly at this point. Looks pretty deep. All right. I ain't going nowhere. Well, at least we know no one's going to jack our ride, right? Jack our ride. <laughs> I believe they don't say that down south. <laughs> they might. It'd be pretty funny. Parking car, yeah. hello. Beat feet and jack and ride. <laughs> like they say as, they say, as they say in Cahabra. Right, as, as they say in Cahabra. Jink makes the world go around. Yeah. <laughs> Don't bust up on me, Nave. <laughs> You're gonna get your brain box brain box rocked <laughs> by a fistful of cash. That's a handful of jink or a blackjack. All right. Well, uh, what do you need us to do, Sammy? I mean, we could all just sleep on the ship. We don't even need men, do we? There ain't no that damn beds in here. There? It's comfortable enough, I suppose. You won't sleep on the hard floor. As a banneker, he's been sleeping on it all the entire time. That ship don't have cabins? I was looking out. The ship was Damn, not Sammy. The ship was not born to have cabins. Well. It was uh not even a captain's quarters? Wolfgang kind of mentions. There was a fore and a half castle. This thing was half finished when we had acquired it. It was also uh, crashed from the sky, right? So the quite the fire damage was quite extensive. He he confirms. Wolfgang does. Well, it landed on a foundry, didn't it? Whatever. Uh, the Gelman and Zox foundry, yes. He says, kind of hesitantly. Well, never what do you know of it? He asks. Well, that would explain the extensive fire damage, wouldn't it? Also explain the profit. Well, that's, what? that's neither here nor there. But what? What? As in money? Profit? Well, ah, that's. He nods and narrows his eyes. I'll take a look around. Did any of those worshippers follow us? No. Okay. <laughs> well, it's up to you. Do you want us to divide up and start working on this thing, or do we? Want, am I okay to start drinking? Oh, the sun's going to set behind those mountains in about two hours, he says, looking towards the west. But we need to go west. I don't think we're going to get much further today. Maybe we should, um... Call it, he says. He's trying to... He, gets it, he tries to speak. And it goes as he's speaking down. In a, in a, with the, in using a language that is probably not... Probably not... He's not accustomed to... He's probably a, you. You guess this man's an aristocrat, but not by the way he dresses. So, yes, we can call it as you, your colloquialism will say. We can just stop for the day and go eat. How about that? Start there, he says. Uh, I thought Warren was on that already. Yeah, it's Warren stirring the pot with the ladle. No, he's stirring the oh, pot. I'm uh. <laughs> Cooking up a mess of food right now. We've done it for long. I, I reckon by the time uh, old Terran gets back, the meal will be ready for everyone. Once you get done eating, we can head to town and drink. Well, I'm sure the place has got an end. We've got the coin. <laughs> got, got my own coin, yes. I thought our uh, room and board was perched. As whatever. Well, if you eat. want good eating, let me do it. Do it then, sir. Master Hex, he, he kind of, he remarks quickly to conf to, to set the record straight. Wolfgang says, Master Hex is trying guarantee no board or room. Yeah. Well then, looks like you're, you're on your own. As I understand it, he had arranged for your groceries to be borne up on the ship. Yes. But I he does not guarantee any room or board along the path, along the track to Kaltirian. Captain, I don't actually even care. So it doesn't matter. I can pay my own way. It's no consequence. It's no consequence either way. I didn't accept your money. 
I'm here at his service, and that's the only reason. So you can keep your money and whatever comes with it. In art. Um, I would inquire with the barrister whether she plans on staying on the boat or if she was willing to take it in. I'd be rather remiss if I was not to walk among Hastings, she says. All right. Be unseemly. Well. We as leal servants of the Baroness are also her ambassadors and we are away. We represent her best of intentions. I would agree. So I, I'll be at your side then. Back at the ranch, back at the, you all kind of all join together, like near the ship. Mm -hmm. You all join together collectively. Every person at the table plus a brother in hand. You all collect (laughs) literally at the ship. (laughs) The sun is setting. So the Burgermeister is a is a bloody proctor. Mm. What's that? Like a priest. Oh, <clears throat> not like a priest. Is a priest. Like a, a father. A proctor. Is a proctor a bishop? Um, at an abbey for a Laurenite. Oh, you'll, you'll excuse me, I'm still getting used to your organized religion around here, Sal. <laughs> can't, can't keep track of all. Well, someday you, you might want to tell me about yours. There's three faces to the gods, basically. Uh, you don't need to. You don't need to get into it with me. No, oh, but I'm just telling you. There's three faces to the god. That's it. It's pretty easy. It's a trinity. So either way, either way, way, can you guess what today is? It's a holy day. It's a holy day. I could have told you that. <clears throat> yeah, probably. Well, the bright side and the star should be amazing. Thank. You think? But uh, we weren't able to speak with the proctor. Wow. Uh, so. We's gonna have to speak with him tomorrow. Well, just so. A nice little rest and relaxation with the winding arm. Yeah, the road's been a little bit rough. <laughs> so. We were well advised to get to the public house of Raven's Loft before sundown. Before sundown. Yes. Well advised. Yes. And never makes me comfortable when they call the learner. Uh, when they say the learner's name by name, hmm. it's always it always makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. Being as I am uh, of the reverent upbringing, yes, would I know that it's very odd for someone to call the learner their name? Uh, it would be unseemly for anyone who is not of the cloth to okay. call the gods by their names. Okay, if you are of the cloth, you are given that dispensation. Yeah. Although it is not the god's name, it is, it is it, it, the, the the gods themselves have foremost priests who represented them many moons ago. Bosaya in the case of the martyr, uh, Asterius uh, in the case of the steward, and Eloran in the case of the learner. All right. Well, what he said. <laughs> I mean, ain't that? I mean, if they're if they're there on the cloth, they can say that. What? Huh? Yeah, you didn't know that. Men in the cloth can use their names. Well, it's not see, in vain when they use it. You see where I'm from. It wasn't exactly a church. It's a name. Well, then, there you go. I mean, if they're in the cloth and they're they're using the names and righteous meanings, so it's all right. Whereas common folk like you and I, we might be using that name in the wrong capacity. In vain or sorts. So they're closer to the gods. Well, they knew them a bit better, right? No, okay. Yeah. It's like it's Mars. like your grace. Mars, it's, you it's hear a strange. lot of dogs barking out in the hills. At first, you when you came came up on it, you thought it was just like animals, like people's house dogs or dogs kind of to, to shepherd animal to shepherd <clears> sheep. <throat> but you don't see any sheep, nor do you see any dogs. You expect perhaps you know, maybe some of the children to come wandering up with their pet, their family dog, to guffaw at the Madeline, but you've seen no no other animals. But you hear the barking of dogs out in the hills. It's trying. Oh, we do have a, a pub that we can go to an end that we could stop.
stay in, in town. I actually have a bed, unlike the past two nights. Well, if there are dogs about, and, and they're, at least they're not as bad as wolves, but you should have make sure that it's a good watch on the, on the oxen. Yeah, agreed. I wonder if there's a fenced-in pasture or something. Are there any people still standing around guffawing? Uh, most of them begin to wander away. The sun is not set, but you can hear the night birds already. The shadows of the mountains grow long across the village, almost like a great cloud that's standing over it. Is there even one person? Was there a corral? A oh, beast? Uh, that's you don't see any fences at all anywhere here. No low-lying stone marker walls to demarcate land. No, no fences to keep animals from wandering away. Nary a shepherd in the hills, nor any animals or other, other uh, chattel to be seen in the hills. So, I think the big woman's responsible for the, the oxen, right? Yes, she says, kind of. I believe we're going to head into the town. I'd rather like that, Roselli, Ro- Barrister Rosalia says. What are you going to do with the oxen? Ron scratches his chin. I would just hate to have to try to gather them all if, the woods, uh, if these dogs send them scattering. Well, the dogs won't go chasing after oxen and stomp them to death. Say we leave them in the oak. What do you say? He turns to Warren. Reckon. Really? Hey, every other night was, we've done the same thing, right? What difference does it make? Oh. All right. I know not of these things, so... Nor I. I've never dealt with oxen, so... There'll be at least one person around, right? No. No? Everyone's gonna be gone? Well, Sammy says... Well, I do, uh... want to do some tinkering, he says, looking up toward the mighty line. If the captain says we can... We can call it... Well, I'm gonna call it. You getting sauced? He turns toward you, Banneker. I have one with you. Alright. Hope you wouldn't, uh, hope you would allow a girl, fellow girl at, uh, your table. A stranger, no less. Yeah. Well, I'll get you, bring your bowl over, and I'll, I'll dip you up some. Oh, I ain't gonna eat here. I'm going in town. <laughs> I'm not gonna eat no girl stetter slop, no offense. <laughs> warm food, warm, but warm food, a bit of honeycomb, some mead. That's more my style. Suit so yourself. You're missing out, I'm telling you. Yep. <laughs> All right. So, who's gonna head into town? Who's gonna stay here? I'm gonna I'm gonna serve my food first. Oh, it's not ready. Oh, okay. It's gonna take a while to cook. Okay. Yeah. Or actually, it takes an hour, I believe. Right? Your professional trait? Yeah. Feast yeah. your That's right. So actually, it is ready. Okay. All right. I'm eating. Okay. Yeah, I'm eating his. I'm gonna attempt a survival test. Uh huh. It's the That's standard, I take it. Oh, did you see what's standard? Uh, that's <laughs> this place is uh, this plenty. This place is plentiful with with um, growth and earth and grass and weeds and roots. Going to be easy for you. Okay. This will be a seventy nine percent chance to succeed. And I succeeded. So anyone who eats of your meal, anyone gets... who eats of my meal, um, uh, four people may go up one step on the damage condition track. And everyone will uh, recover to unhindered tonight, regardless of pain. Yeah, woohoo! Who <laughs> eat of the soup? I, I would like to use one of the damage thresholds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll have a cold bowl, please. <laughs> I'll take a damage threshold. He uh, throws a couple of hot stones at the bottom of this boiling cauldron over the fire, and he tends to it. And he whips everything up very quickly, much like how you'd imagine like a cook whipping eggs. Like he cooks up a stew very, very quickly that he's probably had fermenting uh, in a barrel the entire way here, if not actually in Durindle for some time. When he opens it, it smells absolutely horrendous, like something rotten, almost like the smell of old cabbage. But when it fills your bellies, you feel very, very good. So good, you go up one step of the damage condition track. It's very tasty and aromatic. Yeah. Did everybody go up? That don't need to go up. So. I went up one. I needed I'm to. I'm unharmed. You mean it. I am lightly. Yeah. From our spill. Yep. So, who wants to remain behind with a Madeline who wants to go into town? 
town. I'm going to town. I'm going to town. Going to town. Going to Is town. anybody staying with this thing? I didn't think we needed to. I'm staying with the... I don't uh, think nobody's going to take it, Sammy says. <laughs> we dropped anchor. No, I'm, I'm staying with the uh, barristeress. barristeress. Yeah, she's going into town. Yeah, so barrister. Okay. It's just barrister. It says, a a woman or a man, it's still just a barrister. Okay, I'm still, I'll go with barrister. <laughs> barrister er. It's a male. Barrister S. Barrister S. It's not a barrister. Wait, this is why Henry would be barrister S. Oh, yeah. Barista, if you mean. Barista. Yeah, I'm going with the barista. Yes, I'm going. <laughs> so you. <I'm> going to... <laughs> <laughs> fucking rowdy. <laughs> that was, that was Sun's the, not even down. This place is on fire. <laughs> it's a holy night. It's a holy night. It's time for fisticuffs at the bar. Get lit. <laughs> Got Emperor take the wheel. You come inside the uh, the Ravens locked and it's rather busy. There's a lot of people in here. It's like it's like when you're out in the streets. It's, it's certainly a holy day because you hardly see anybody working. But when you get inside the Raven's Loft, it is shoulder to shoulder, people bellied up to the bar, trying to get one of the bartenders' attention, serve one of the publicans' attention, to serve them mead. And a lot of people are gathered here. Hope there's rooms. <clears throat> see a generous amount of people walking around this way and that. It's bustling. Lisa's gonna attempt to push her way. Not push, but like slide her way up to the bar to talk to the floor. Turn that shit off! A man says. It's a busy place. So you make your way up to the, uh, to, to, to the, to the bar, finally after about ten minutes, and a very exasperated, young-looking man says, what's your poison? Actually, first I was wondering if I could secure a room. Rooms? Uh, no, I can't take care of that right now. You want something to drink or eat? I need to get the orders in. I'm really busy, miss. I'm sorry. Take a picture. Meals? No. I'm take one of those honeycombs. They're, they're delicious. He uh, he pulls up a wooden box and subscribe into it. All right, a couple of pitches. He's so you know you only have to come to us once. Look at that. We're thinking ahead. All and right, I, I like that. I like that. I'm sorry. I'm just really busy. Uh, for a lot of you, it's uh, five shilling. Got this one, yes. <clears throat> lady. All right. I'm still abstaining from the drink. <laughs> Fine. Fine. Understandably, you're busy, but at what time could we speak of lodging? What you do? Uh, talk to that man down there. He's taking rooms and numbers. Thank you. Place is filling up quick, he says. Lisa still start kind of pushing her way that way. You look around and you realize there's birds and nested somewhere up in the rafters in this place. Rock, rock, rock! He's calling of this, calling of this crow or raven. How very provincial of this place. Start yeah. counting crows. It's so, mm-hmm. it's so you know when to wake up. Is that it? Yeah. Personally, I don't want them above me. It's fucking disgusting. Correct. It's just like back home. Yeah. You get shit on my friends. Well, well, no, not shit on, but you know, it's so lucky. I just assume that at some point, this would happen. Everybody roll a gay off that now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll be able to secure a room. Is it you want private room? You want a public room? You want a room of. No rooms above the stable, he corrects himself. Private room, public room. What's the public room's two shilling. Private room's six, he says. Private, Private room, please. How many of you? Six. Oh, we have the, the other two. Where Seven, you? eight. They're already taking care of themselves. Six. Six, all right, 12 we shilling. Need, we need Three beds of room. Mm. 
Put that on my, uh, mm. my tab with you. I'm, taint, no, I'm touching that tainted gold. <laughs> I'll lean over to uh, Tarawin and say, if, if we're meaning to do guard duty, do you want to do uh, set up shifts? Mm-hmm. You're going to set up shifts inside the tavern? Sleep outside a window? Like, stand outside a door? Oh, uh, just to be clear, that's what you intend to do. That's what I'm asking. Seems kind of paranoid if you ask me. Is we're it, in. Is what we do. We're in and in. And what would be a good thing to do is if someone were to stay awake in that room so that they could listen. Because if we if we're putting up post outside someone's room, then you're drawing more. Attention. It's more of a target. Yeah, but it's an inn. It's safe to sleep. That's the whole point. We're in town, and in town is where there are more people. Well, last and time someone decided to stay in an inn that was heavily populated and not. In we're in a fairly nice area. He got drug out and tied on top of this horse. Oh, well, we, no one knows us in this town. We're okay. That we know of. <laughs> it was just a question. Yeah. Just no, throw it's, it out there. it's a good question. And yes, we are going to have a watch where the room that is next to us is going to take shifts. So if you don't want to take a shift, don't take the room next to us. I don't want to take a shift. I'll take the room next to us. <laughs> Do we have a room near the barrister? Well, I can put your rooms together, he says. Good. You and those others that came. Yes. On that, uh... Land ship. <laughs> all right. All right, so all the rooms together, same hallway, second floor rooms, uh, 2A, 2B, 2C. Sounds like winter. All right. Cash up front, key on delivery. If you need anything stored down below in the cellar, we got a place you can keep things. For yeah. safety's sake, he clarifies. Nope. Quite good, thank you. Oh, there's that fucking minstrel again. Alright, come on, I gotta get going. Come on, come on, come on. Next! He seems to be in quite a bit of a hurry. This place is incredibly busy. We got some lovely rooms upstairs. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> Well, we already bought one. Are you trying to sell us another? <laughs> We're confused. Hey, right, where's the uh, where's the barrister right now? Uh, kind of looking around this place. She is sitting down at a nearby table along with Wolf Gang. Prong is not far by, not nearby. It's also nearby as is Sammy. They've kind of sat down and Sammy is waving you guys over to their table. All right. Do we have our picture? Yep. Yeah. Food and pitch will be served Pictures. shortly. We don't need food. Yeah. Honey comes. <laughs> Better than a <laughs> dessert. Ah! You can always eat. You always have room for dessert. It's been a long three days, Wolfgang says. Indeed. Oh! Come sit! He encourages you to sit at their table. I need to take a seat. So, as I was saying, back in Red Larch, not far to the north, my great uncle, a man named Lucky Lucius, they called him. Lucius Redmayne had the worst luck of anybody my father knew. Swore that uh, every day something bad would happen. A storm, the fall of a you know, twist his ankle, boots come untied. Bad bits all around. Oh, Lou, Lucky Lucius, he goes on and tells this kind of funny story about this man outside of some town you've never heard of to the west. <laughs> That's a good one. 
You ever heard of the learner tell a story? You know, they believe that the learner creates all stories for all men and puts them in your brain. They also say that the learner tells all jokes. You ever heard of the learner say this? He kind of... No? So your story came from the learner. Maybe. Probably, probably your um, man, but I believe your uncle's luck came from the ninth bottle. <laughs> they certainly like to take a lot of credit for all that stuff, don't they? Well, I'm just, you know, telling you what I've heard. When credit is given, someone will take it. <laughs> Everybody is still in line trying to get their room set up. I'm going to look around to see if there's anybody who appears to be like concentrating on us or watching us. Okay, roll a secret scrutinize test. Sorry, a secret awareness test, my apologies. Awareness? Yeah. Good sight base. Uh, so, 42. He <laughs> rolled a 44. <laughs> this is going one way or the other. <laughs> oh, there is definitely people looking at us. There's a... I think that critical failure... Hmm. What's your drawback again? My drawback yeah. is persecution complex. Cannot rest or recover peril in urban environments without yeah. laudanum. I think that we're going to extend that to Hastings as well. As you feel that all eyes are kind of turned toward you, you feel this real deep sense of uncomfortableness. You feel that somebody has followed you from Durindal. Not only that, a very well could be the salt pyramid hiding among the others in plain sight. Your persecution complex is getting the better of you at that critical failure. Like you feel it. very uncomfortable. And you can see this in Lisa. She's looking... A bit, a bit jittery. All right, there, Lisa. I think there's someone here. It has oh, to be. Oh yeah, there's there's always someone here. We, we look. I'm just saying. We took a gigantic boat for three days across a fucking plains land. Someone had to pull us in. I'm waiting for them. So you're feeling what I'm feeling. I get it. You think there's someone here as well? Yeah, she's watching. Can't get away from her. Shit. What? I'm confused. Sun's down! You hear it called across the room. Sun's down! And you hear this person ringing a bell inside. What? You can see a couple. You see a couple of the people who were clearly working the bar. They're kind of hauling over this huge piece of lumber with their shoulders, and they put it behind the door. At least it jumps. All the windows are being shuttered shut. From the inside, locked and latched. She puts her back to a wall. Felisa finds the one spot where she can put her back to a wall. A few of the uh, the people who are the locals appear to be accustomed to this strange ritual. What is others? What is others are kind of like, what's going on? Other travelers who have been in and out of this place probably know the drill. What, what is what is this? Wild dogs, a man says, <laughs> drinking his drink. Wolfgang is kind of looking among the lot of you and looking toward the locals. Wild. Dogs. Are you sure that our oxen are going to be fine now? Wolfgang, kind of. <laughs> Good question. Are you sure a man's going to be okay Are that's still out there? No one's here. No, no one's out there. Everyone okay. came. Everyone came. Yeah. <coughs> if not. Not one that particularly likes being brought into a place. No. Alright. Your house had a bad place. experience. <laughs> Especially when I think there might be somebody in here who does not wish us the best. Well, oh, they're armed, us. they're armed. We'll figure it out at the end of the night. I'll take uh, a look I would just like Another one of those pitches, Bucky. She points at her elbow. Last time, she ah. around somebody who was armed. It didn't last very well for me. Yeah. It'll be fine. I want to ask about the dogs. So the man with two working arms. Tell me about them dogs. We're all rumor <laughs> tests. I can't be. I mean, just a couple dogs can't be that much trouble. Routine can't for you. You said routine. Yep. Okay. Uh, I can ignore that. Because, uh, <laughs> all right. So fifty-three. Oh boy. That's a thirty-five. Dogs. <laughs> That's right. You got big ones out in the hills. Dogs or wolves. Dogs, he says, oh, well. kind of beaming proudly. All right, well, dogs, I mean, they ain't that bad, are they? I mean, you can usually shoot them away. He kind of leans in a bit. Is 
dogs, yes. Lisa reaches for her knuckle duster and starts to slide it onto her hand. <laughs> Here's some awfully spooky music we just had up here. Is this a belly dancing one? No. It was the church. Well, <laughs> it was the church. Damn, Laura. You see, every night from the mountains comes these old dogs, shaggy and big, teeth made of bronze, storming and raiding all about Hastings. Raiding Hastings? That's right. How a dog gonna raid? Well, these dogs walk up on two feet. Picks? In their hands, they've got claws made of bronze and iron. Teeth. Big as a man's fingers. Like this. Doesn't sound like any dog I ever saw. Well, <laughs> you ain't seen the folk dogs now, have you? Sounds like it's folk bad. dressed up as dogs to me. Ah, definitely sounds like a folk tale. Some people in the mountains, they don't take kind of us in Hastings anymore. Being all in disarray as they are, well, for the past two weeks, sorry, two months, they've taken every horse, every bit of horse flesh, Every chicken, every animal, all the horses, all the cattle, raiding us nightly. Now, they ain't laid no hand on anybody. They're taking all our animals. So here we are. Bar out the doors, just in case these dogs decide to, with no animals left, they decide to come in and take us. <laughs> well, we got animals out there. Uh oh, he says. <laughs> you know, it would have been bad if somebody would have told us this before sundown. Look in the fucking Hastings, he says, smiling, drunk as piss. <clears throat> I'm gonna walk over. Did you hear that, Captain? He, uh, narrows his eyes. Sounds like we need to go defend these animals if we're going anywhere. Before we start jumping into some trouble, let's take measure of what's some, let's take measure of what these people really mean. Yeah, it's just some drunk. You know, maybe he's just tall tales. Just mind not telling tall tales, but let's get let's take stock of the situation before we put ourselves in danger. I know maybe you're accustomed to jumping into hell's mouth and doing what you do is the do fray, but it's not the way we operate. It's not the way I operate. Well it's your operation. It's your operation. Look, we don't move then. And... Logistically, it's your fault, so I'll keep drinking. Well, and to be fair, the barrister was the only one that we were supposed to escort. Mm -hmm. And I reckon Agnes has a sense and to a get up there on, the, on that uh, old deliver her. So she probably fine. All right. Well, it just so happens, happens that your enough. food stuff is on that on that ship. Yep. And we unloaded it when we stopped. So if they're gonna take cattle, they're gonna take your fucking food too. So maybe you should give a shit. Well, I don't. Agnes says. I can pay for my own food, too. In a mountain? Enough! Well, he keeps trying to agitate me. I understand. Let's be the better people here. As I'll uh, kind of give him a look to maybe instill a little bit of guilt into him. Sit your fucking men, he says. You, you, you can leave our table. I just did. As I get up and walk away. Well, the place is rowdy still. The way I see it. <laughs> the way I see it. We can go and load our food back up on the ship. No. We can no, go no. and fetch our food. We can ask and see if they have extra food here that we can purchase. That would be at a premium if they've lost everything. That's true. We can stay out under the stars. 
There's just one question about that. The gift was not in the contract. It's just that. But... Yeah, the gift wasn't in the contract, but I'd like to eat. We can forge. You know how to forge, because I don't. I can shoot a dog. You can shoot a dog, yes. And we do have a cook. There we go. You know how to forge for things to go with meats. I reckon. I don't prefer it. Hey, the dog if, is you, if you ask me, <laughs> the sound I, like the dogs are I say, <laughs> I say we go out there, put it up before they get there. I think we can make it in time. This isn't a big town. Rush out there, load up, load it up. We'll be good, safe. They gonna let us back in? No. Why don't we just fire the? The metallurgical device on the, on the ship scare the hell out of me. Done with it. Huckle gun. Yeah. I don't know how Pickle to do that. <laughs> they do. Uh, well, I done pissed off uh, Captain, my captain over there. Well, let's unpiss him off then. Well, that's your job. Uh, Aren't you guys buddies from your childhood? Uh, my childhood, not his. But I would be so surprised to say buddies, but. I'm not, uh, I'm certain I can do the job if that's what it takes. Sure. I bet we can chase across and, uh, chase away some mountain folk with a, uh, a good show and a fire and awe, if you will. That might do it for the, that might take care of this town for a bit, too. I ain't likely to be coming back. Give you advice. So I'm playing if you ask me. Talk and I can hide. I can't kill things. This is not all of you. I've seen you do it. Well. Okay, I can't kill things unless they're sitting on their knees with no weapon. Then I'm really quite good at it. Yet. That's how it starts. Yeah. Either way, I'm not going to be as much of a help in this. And I still don't trust the surroundings. I would be alright getting out of this end, but I don't know that going to the ship is the best way. Roll up one, see if you can do this. I mean, sorry. But Alice will see if you can do this. Alright. Leave the woman here with you. Let's have a conversation. The Baroness. We'll take the big one with us. Best. I'll approach Wolfgang's table. Baron. Whatever her name is. Whatever we're doing here. He looks up. Not knowing the difference. Does he offer any words or just look me in the eye and silently? He's looking you in the eye silently. There's something you wanted to add? I haven't, uh, we haven't shared any crosswords. Nobody else here speaks for me. I'm glad you speak for yourself. So as you surround yourself with that, to show their ass. Listen. I, ignoring that comment, I'll just continue with the... <sighs> These are, uh, mountain savages, and I imagine just a, uh, a showing of fire from that, uh, that cannon device aboard that, uh, behemoth is probably going to be enough to scare them off. I agree. Your grandfather dealt with these mountain men before out near Giant's Head. They're the same people. You can't just leave the oxen out there. We'll be we won't stay in this place. I, uh, I'm not really much suited to staying around here longer. And if I take the oxen, then that's what that means. Yeah, I take the oxen, we're all fucked. So let's go and someone's gonna have to, someone who knows how to work this name thing is gonna have to get up there. Somebody's gonna have to defend any uh, incursion from the ground. I well, assume I can do that without them blowing my ass off. I don't think I'm going to just sit here while this is happening, the barrister says. I have to take stock of everything that goes on. 
You are the woman. You get your people. I'm already standing by the door. <laughs> Let's figure um, it out. He nods. Funny, we're going to do my idea. Yes. I've often found with people with large personalities is that we want to give them an idea and then think it's theirs. Ah. Open that damn door, Wolfgang says. If you go outside, you forfeit your rooms to the others. All right, and uh, and some money back. It's not the way this works. The tavern keeps says. We'll we didn't come use it. Come back tomorrow. Use it then. No refunds. He points for the sign above the above the uh, bar. We'll take credit. Then. Credit it is. Very well. We can have that conversation in the morning. Yeah, that's fine. So outside you go. I mean, it appears the dogs are charging at this point. <laughs> Maybe we should. Oh my god! Oh, <laughs> you head outside, and the the all of Hastings is quiet, save for the droning of uh, the uh, crickets and. Barking of dogs somewhere out in the hills. <laughs> the hounds of Timberlers. So fearsome are those hounds. <laughs> Barking of dogs. <laughs> they may sound small, but they are mighty. <laughs> this is kind of perfect, though. It's great. <laughs> Ambiance. You begin walking uh, through Hastings back toward the ship. And as you, upon your approach, the, the oxen are still there. Apparently unmolested so far. Sorry, one second here. The oxen appear to be unmolested completely. Better get that gun loaded then. Well, yeah. we need some need? help. He said, uh, Sammy says, I can help. You know the deck. What's going up? How many you need? All right. I reckon three. Ah, uh, just this one here. He smiles. He smirks. All right. Two of you are climbing up the rope. Boss men don't like you. I don't like him either. He thinks you're some smart aleck from the west. He's pulling himself out the rope. I think he's an aristocrat piece of shit from here. <laughs> hey, he told me to put you to work. <laughs> now, come on. We'll level with you. We'll get you be an asshole. I can tell that. Well, you be an asshole, too. No. Look at the... He, was, he kept after me multiple times. <laughs> I've not been an asshole. I've been honest. I'm not taking your money, but I'm here. Well, let's do the work, then. There we go. I'm good with that. And have I have I bucked at the work? No. I think we got it under control, Wolfgang. Yep. Wolfgang does. All right. Yells from down above. All right, let's go down below. I'm gonna grab a few things. Wolfgang is kind of looking out into the hills. It's dark. They strike a torch. The uh, cauldron you left burning has the fire has smoldered and went out at this point. So is the plan for us all to stay down here then? Well, I reckon uh, we'd probably be staying here for the night. Look, you all defrain. I'm a level with you. I'm a level with you straight. This is a shitty situation. Right. Okay, it says. I get your. Supposed to keep the bearish safe, and so are we. But if we're at odds like this, it's gonna be a fucking shit ass trip. And as a captain of this ship and this operation, I don't give a fuck who you are. My ship, my rules. We all pull a load, we all do work together. If you can't handle that, 
go back to fucking Durendal. But I'm telling you now, you don't call the shots. I do. We clear? Yeah. You don't hear any guff from me. My mission is to get the battle line of the Barrister to Kaelterium. And if you want to mince words about what you're supposed to do, what you're not supposed to do, then when you say those words clear here, it's the last thing I'm going to hear of it. You speak straight. You look at me as if I haven't spoken straight. You speak for all your men? This woman? I told him to let her go. Well, I'll think they're military folk. Like you and me. You know? They're not. Alistair will narrow his eyes <laughs> and, uh... With this thing, we'll fucking say nothing. Yeah. I'm getting on this horse. Metal shield in one hand, military lance in the other. Get your people in line. That's the last one to say it. Alright. You know what? I think we'll do better. You know, obviously you're calling the shots. Perhaps if uh, you ask me to ask them, you could better run your operation. I'd be more than willing to do that. I'm used to the shit. Y'all are frame. Right? Yeah, we is. And you got a reputation to uphold, right? Yeah, we do. Control your people. It'll all work out from there. Well, I appreciate the advice. You, you and Sammy load this thing up wordlessly. All right, I think it's, uh, I think it's fixed. It's ready as, as ready as gonna be. He you know, looks at it a bit apprehensively. You know how to use this thing? God no, he says. Well, I do. You? You want to be the one a lot of it's all, it's all of you, he says, kind of holding his hands back. I'm from Gross, I don't know nothing about this damn shit. Why are you up here and he's not? That doesn't make any sense. I don't know nothing about this either. It just looks intimidating. You know, it's kind of like carrying a sword at your waist. People people don't cross you because you, you look dangerous. Same thing with a pickle or a puckle gun. See, yeah, I'm, I'm the opposite. You carry a sword at your waist, you better be able to use it. Well. That's, that's, that's the real world. Well, we, we're living a, a rather absurd life as we're taking a ship that's made for water, was born in air, is now being brought by land. So, I think those rules kind of got, got left behind, partner. Well, I guess you're right. I, well, I think we're ready, <laughs> Sammy says. At least you're looking around the hills. You haven't seen anyone out here, but you've certainly heard dogs barking out in the hills. Yeah. Does it sound like real dogs or? Yeah. Oh yeah. Barking and yapping. Of, not a small dog like the one upstairs, but, uh, <laughs> but the actual barking and howling so of dogs out the hills. <laughs> it sounds like hunting dogs, yipping, like hounds yipping and yapping. So, sounds like he's almost twelve pounds. <laughs> <laughs> They're all named Sadie or Beaver Toes. <laughs> all right, all right. It's just one's a pop. <clears throat> I turn to Kron and and say, you want to help me keep keep track of these animals? How's the, how's the moon like? It's very, very clear out. In fact, it's almost a full moon. You have a good view of the surrounding hills. All right. So I'll get my spyglass out and see you. And try to mm-hmm. do some... Threcking lighter? I mean, we're this high up, right? Mm-hmm. We should be able to see them. And it's finally clear. Yep. Roll a challenging awareness test. Challenging awareness. You get a generous amount of moonlight, which is good. You get a clear view. You can see the grasses kind of weaving this way and that. The shadows of the clouds kind of rolling across the fields. It's a 51 with my eyeglass. And I rolled an 18. Well, somewhere out there, you don't see torchlight, but you see... What looks like pockets of people kind of roaming around 
Hastings. Nowhere nearby, at least, but uh, they're certainly out there. There's people out there. You can't make out how many. You can't make out who they are, any features, but you can tell there are people out there. Well, so we've got people to the whatever direction that is. West-ish. For them toward the mountains. They carry any torches? They're not. It they're is. definitely moving towards Hastings. It is dark. Come on. As much well. as I would love to save Hastings, we've got oxen to protect. Uh, now, the barrister did come back with us, right? They all came back. Oh, yeah, everybody came back. Is she on the ground or is she up in the ship? On the ground. You yeah. might want to put her up on the ship with the uh, the walls to protect her. Pull the pull the pull the ropes up. We can keep these oxen from bolting. Mm-hmm. Once you do what you're doing, you hear from Krung yell up there. A very kind of uh, haunting kind of womanly voice. I think these oxen may try to bolt. We're gonna have to let them loose. Otherwise, it'll pull this damn thing down. I don't trust it. That's a good point. No, um, How I'm many off. do you see out there? She inquires. I can't tell you. What's your direction? Towards west, coming down from Hastings. Okay. Towards Hastings. Okay, and pulls at his beard. I'm not sure if we should aim the damn thing at them or not. Let's say you, Alistair. At this point, they're behaving exactly as they said they would. If they come down from the town, they don't actually harm nobody. It seems dangerous to fire that damn thing towards town. Calorating is a... Uh, that's a crime out west. I don't know if it's a crime. I don't know if I'm necessarily empowered to make that decision, but I don't necessarily feel comfortable potentially killing people. Not my business. Well, Harper thinks something, but he doesn't actually say something. Hey. Something about warning shots and words, uh, but he doesn't say it. I don't, uh, he just thinks it. I don't precisely know what that thing does, but opinion. I can't imagine it turns out well if you uh, if you light the fuse on it. Gods below, I'm sure it's rather infernal. There's no I, telling what we'll do to the Madeline either. So, who's? I must admit. Fire the thing. None of us have. When he says that, um, uh, Terran goes, Wait, I'm re- who's up there? Banneker and Sammy. And I gave him the torch! Sammy says over the edge. Banneker and Sammy are kind of leaning off the top of it. Um, I know you're, you were a dragoon, did you, sir? I mean, I've gone through training. I got a bit of warfare under my belt. They could kill themselves up there if they tried to fire. Well, I thought the woman was a, a, a yeah, sure. No, no, this is this is something else. Right. I mean, so you want me to go up there and help? Them? Well, I've got no. I'm an, an illiterist, she says. That's where we get that wrong. I'm a writer, she says. Not the barrister. The I'm sorry, ma'am, I don't remember your name, and everyone keeps calling you something big. And uh, Rosalia, big. please, just call me R- Rosalia. Maybe you misunderstood me. I was using my courtly voice, she says, enunciates. She is a literist. She is a writer. A very big, the huge one? No, I'm standing artist. right here, she says. No, I mean, I mean, seriously, I don't know. I mean, Bigly. Haram Bigly. That's she nods. who you're speaking of. I bet... Raconteur, she says, of a sort. Uh, Storyteller. Ah, uh, that is not what we were told. Boss, I got this if, we're, if it comes down to it. I mean, really light just, it, light it, point it, run. That makes me really nervous. Uh, you have any training in siege weapons? That's what you said, right? Uh, I said I had a little bit of warfare under my belt. I know how to shoot a gun. Sammy, I can't hear. Come on down. Wolfgang commands. You want me to go up there? You can. I do. All I'd, right, then. I'd go up there, but I, f- I have a feeling I'm going to be needed here on the ground. All right. I'll, I'll make sure that they don't blow their heads off. You can be clamoring up top. Yeah. 
I'll leave my. Uh, it's just you and Sammy she and Banneker, and who else wants to go up here. there? Oh, Are on the ground? I'll point out that we loaded it just like the, you normally <laughs> yeah. would with Pyro Shot. I'll point out yeah. that. You both, you have a skill ring in Warfare? No, but I have a skill yeah. ring in okay. Martial Range. That's all I need to know. Yeah, I got Well, well uh, so uh, War Machines are, you, are fired using. Warfare. Yeah, yeah, no I, clue about I, that. That's okay. Right yeah. You load you load it up as as, as you as, expect it to, and you come up and you and you inspect you're like too much powder, yeah, not enough payload. Um, so he'll begin to correct some of the yeah. the the out the, the the what goes into it. He begins kind of ordering you to stuff it uh, stuff to restuff the powder down and to put swabs into the and to push swabs down inside as well to create the packet. Uh, of right. fire. All right, you you seem to know what you're doing better than I do. Puckle guns fire grape shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's like these iron balls that are like wrapped together in chains and stuffed down with uh, with uh, pyre shot and swabs of uh, of uh, oiled cloth. Right. And there's about there's nine of these the nine of these pipes that extend out about like six feet. All right. I'll, I'll point. I'll point exactly where they're at. All right. They're outside of the village, so if you want to shoot them, shoot them now. I don't. I thought we had a reputation to uphold, so killing well, bandits would fit with that, wouldn't it? I think it'd be best to scare them because you kill them, they might come back with blood. One way or another, they might come back with more. If we scare them away. Maybe they take a day or two before they figure out. And we'd be gone by then. So, you're telling... It, let me, I'm saying warning shots, not words. <laughs> so you're lying, As I'm up here, <laughs> not so down so there. <laughs> don't kill the raiders on the village of the woman you're trying to set. I'm, I'm saying... Because I'm not getting your logic, if that's true. I'm, I'm saying we can cause more harm by drawing blood. You, you make the decision. Alright. You set up this woman. Do you want to take me get, me, let, Before you do that, let me get these animals in line. Well, I ain't fine. Come on, you own to. ox, the woman says, as you are kind of <laughs> pulling them away from the ship. The thing teeters precariously, leaning still to one side. Uh, the, uh, the anchor keeps it affixed into the ground, though. You don't need me up here. I mean... Normally, you just mostly need them to load, right? If mm-hmm. I take a look at it, yeah, you've seen scorch marks all across the deck of this thing. Yeah, like the fire damage is pretty extensive to the amount of line mm-hmm. that happened historically. So, <laughs> I don't think we will be shooting this a whole lot. Maybe once or twice. It's the most I would probably risk it right now, unless there was a mighty need. Do you have any main dash place? How far up are we? Uh, about twenty feet. Is there a so this is like the tower. Is there a deck that I can get on? Yeah, absolutely. I'll go down to the deck and I'll pull my bow out. Okay. So I got a crossbow as well. So is your intention to aim the puckle gun at their general area to fire at them, to fire near them, to fire over them? Basically, so if I can figure out where they're going to be coming from, uh-huh. uh, basically I want to be aiming at the tree line. So not necessarily, because like, I don't know, are we in the middle of the town? Like, no, you're, you're on the, the you're on the ex- exterior. Because yeah, we basically kind of up to the exterior of the town. So yeah. that's what I'm saying. Just and they're, they're coming the from the, the west. You're trying to avoid the town. Um, yes, I'm trying to avoid the town. Did it? Was I able to hear their conversation at all? No, they're up top. Okay. No. Yeah. yeah. So you want to fire toward the general area? I don't. Know. Or, or fire we... at them. I mean, I'll yell down, do you want me to fire now, or do you want to wait till we see the whites their eyes? Fire in front of them. Right now? Yes. All right. Gives us time to reload. Uh, there's yeah. nine barrels already loaded. Reloading ain't the problem. Structural integrity, pushing this thing over. I don't know what the hell's going to happen when we fire this gun. You get the scope to your eye out there, Banneker, and you can see that they're kind of starting to slowly meander... Not toward Hastings, but toward the Madeline. They're moving through the fields, avoiding the town. They're coming perhaps, this way. Perhaps You're drawn by the great slow. curiosity okay. of this strange thing. Or perhaps the oxen that are being herded away. You're not really sure. They're coming this way. 
If they're coming this way, then wait until you've got a good shot. All right. So I'll try to take aim. And uh, uh, yeah. so the distance from Ribblequin, it's called a Ribblequin, is uh, nine times procession bonus on yards. They're about uh, 62 yards out. Nine. My perception bonus is five, so nine times five is 45. Yeah. So that would be within uh, medium range, right? That's right. You see the whites of their eyes are already on you. But they're moving fairly slowly. They're kind of spread out. And they're beginning to slowly meandering through the grass. They probably didn't even know they were here. Yeah. They're, com- they're coming through the field. Alright. I mean, they set fire. That's what we'll do. You fire on them or fire near them? I'm going to fire near them. Okay. Because I was wanting to do a warning shot first. So, like, in front of them. Like okay. So, all uh, whenever this fires, the entire volley fires. Oh, all nine of them fire? Or, sorry, my apologies. No, no, no. It can be fired for nine times without having to spend action points. To right. Play. So, you know, fire just one? Right, just fire one. Okay. He takes the torch and places it over the fuse. And as you begin to use, you're kind of scoping it out, Banneker, and you get the torch brought down, and the oxen are drawn away. You feel the shift. You feel the shift slightly shift to one side as the oxen are taken away and one of the wheels starts to slightly slip and we'll pause here oh so 36 